All right, I got to hit this very quickly. Um, comfort pets have been all over the news lately. There's been articles in the New York Times, uh, the Boston Globe. It's reached a breaking point. We talked earlier about Dexter the Peacock, a woman trying to claim that she had to bring a peacock into the cabin of a plane and have it sit next to her for her emotional comfort and support. Please. Now, there's a difference. There are service animals, which I think we can all 100% support service animals. You know, people with vision uh, impairments. Uh, there are service animals that are trained. Uh, if someone has epilepsy, they can actually sense when a seizure is coming, going to, uh, going to hit and, and take action to pre pre uh, help protect uh, their 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 human companion uh, so there are there are, there are legitimate service animals which we all support and then this nonsense about um, emotional support animals I mean my daughter Grace when she lived in North Carolina one of her roommates uh, tried to pull this scam I mean they, they lived in a place in a, in a uh, apartment complex where no no dogs were allowed no pets were allowed no dogs or cats and uh, uh, at a doctor's appointment, she stole a piece of her doctor's stationery, forged a note from the doctor saying she needed this emotional support dog. Yeah, that didn't fly. The landlady called the doctor's number on his stationery. I never wrote that letter. Oops, oops, that caused them trouble. But we had, uh, what, Dexter the Peacock. Uh, there's a story going, I heard today, from our Spirit Airlines a woman tried to board, or called, actually called the Spirit Airlines ahead of time, said she wanted to bring her her support animal with her on her flight to help her with her anxiety flying. Yeah, her support animal, a pet dwarf hamster, was her support animal. She called Spirit Airlines ahead of her time. They said, sure, sure, go ahead, you can bring it. She shows up at the boarding gate with her support animal, Emotional support animal, the pet dwarf hamster. They refused to let her on the plane with it, said she had to flush it down the toilet if she wanted to board, which she did. And now she is suing, suing Spirit Airlines for the emotional trauma of flushing her support dwarf hamster uh, down the toilet. So there's all different kind of places we can go with this. Um, but um, instead of going to the op-ed page of the Globe or the New York Times, uh, let's go to an Ask Amy column about uh, this nonsense about support pets. Uh, Dear Amy, I have a couple of friends with therapy dogs. I fully support these dogs providing needed support and companionship. I do, however, expect dogs, whether they are therapy dogs or not, to be well-trained, well-behaved, and clean when they are a guest in my home. One friend came to my ho house for dinner with her, quote, therapy dog, end quote. The dog is very sweet and important to my friend, and I genuinely like the dog. However, the dog had a dirty butt, and my friend let her sit on our furniture. No doubt the white furniture without the plastic covering. Let her eat expensive cheese off of our good china at the table and let her stand on her lap with its butt posted over the dinner, or poised over the dinner table. Wow. Hello, Lee. Yeah, good morning. We'll be that's right a, with you. That's a heck of a one to walk in on. Yeah, that's a fine how do you do. We'll yeah. finish this story. Yeah. Take a break and give no, you our undivided no, yeah. attention. No, I know that uh, some parents think their children can do no wrong, but in this case, the yes. service pet can do no wrong. Perfect analogy. Yeah. Very yeah. well done. She shot us a look of, how dare you say that, when we asked that the dog stay on the floor, not beg, and not eat people food off my fine china. She's been very distant since then. Lucky you. Yeah. Uh, do you or any of your readers have any advice on the etiquette of interacting with other people's therapy dogs? First of all, I guarantee you this is not a certified therapy dog. Yeah. She just calls it that. Was it you or someone else told me? You can just go on the interweb now. No, I didn't say that, but I wouldn't doubt it. Okay. Oh, it was but, my but daughter a, Grace. A service dog should be properly trained. They're not supposed to do that baloney. Like, like Karis. Uh, remember Bruce Alexander's dog? She would come in here. 
Oh, yeah. Sit right at his feet. I I stepped on her paw once by accident, and she didn't react. That's a trained service dog. No, they're supposed to be put through all kinds of rigorous training. Exactly right. That was Um, just a uh, pickup animal, I think, in this case. I think it was Grace, and if it wasn't, if it was one of you listeners, I sincerely apologize. Someone told me you can go to the interweb and just order. You smell something burning? Who knows? Nothing I'm doing Maybe. that I know of. Oh, oh well. Anyway. I haven't lit myself on fire in the last few decades that I can remember. We haven't had a fire in this studio since uh, two the birthdays candles, ago, yeah, and yeah. I still have one of those candles. Yeah. But anywho, Paul, Paul, focus, Paul, focus, stick to the point. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, yes, you can go on the interweb yeah. and just order a phony baloney yeah. service dog vest yeah. in, different, excuse me, in different sizes for yeah. your animal. And, you know, people aren't going to question that right away. No. Uh, where are we here? Uh, so how does Amy answer this question? I fail to see what is therapeutic about having a poorly trained dog interfering with your human friendship. Yeah. To me, this is the opposite of therapeutic. Mm-hmm. And to me, that would be evidence that it's not a therapeutic support dog at all. It's just, you know, a dog yeah. That you call a support dog, yeah. so you can bring it to your friends' homes, so and they can make a mess on of their planes and everything else. Unbelievable! Ah, uh, but up, but up, but ah. I think this whole therapy animal trend is out of control. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Forty and, years ago, you never would have seen anything like this. Right. And unfortunately, this only serves to diminish the important role yeah. that trained and sanctioned animals serve for those who truly need them yeah no i grew up in the era of seeing eye dogs you you uh, accepted that yep but they were the eyes for the person and the person had hold of the animal pretty much the whole time uh, uh you sound exceptionally tolerant your expectations are completely reasonable you're better off without this self-centered yeah. rotten friend okay i made up that last sentence <laughs> yeah. but i do believe that yeah um you you write the comment uh but up but up but she's been very distant since then and you're complaining about that? Yeah. I would say thank your lucky stars. Yeah. Let's go to the phone lines at 508-222-1320. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I sure like some expensive cheese and top um, self liquor. Yeah, right. Where do I get in? <laughs> uh, sorry, Steve. You have two legs, not four. Yeah, there you go. But <laughs> it's like you can't even say seeing an eye dog anymore. That's not politically correct. Oh, God. Guide dogs. Oh, my God. It's like people... Relax. Yeah. Have you ever owned one, Steve? No, I'm not ready for that at this point in my life. I, I love the animals, but that that is a very big commitment. Yeah. It's a lot of work, mm. and I'll stick with my cane for right now. Okay. Okay. Plus, you know, if uh, anyone annoys you, you can smack them with your you cane. Know, it's like, much more difficult like to throw I your think, dog at someone. Yeah, I'd, I'd say on guard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, so you're someone, you know, again, you, you are vision impaired. So I think one of the important points of that letter is all these phony baloney emotional yeah. support dogs, and this is what you said, it makes it tougher for people like Bruce Alexander or for people yeah. like you who yeah. actually need real, real yeah. service yeah. animals. I'll give you a better one better. Okay. We have a book club with um, vision impaired, whatever you want to call it. And this person has a, not a guide dog, but it's whatever kind of animal it is. It jumps up on the food. It, it smells. It's like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. Man. No, that, that's out of control, definitely. I love animals, too, but not to yeah. that point. Here's what you do to find out if it's a real trained dog. Next time you go, you bring, a, like, a slab of steak. Oh, yeah. Open the door, throw the steak out the door. If the mm-hmm. dog chases a steak, steak, it's not a real trained service dog. If I it may, stays by well its owner, Fox, it is. I may as well go to Foxwoods and throw my money away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. yeah. Good point. All right. <laughs> Have a great weekend and enjoy the Olympics. Hey, yeah, th- yeah, th- thanks, Steve. All right. All right, there he goes. All right. 508-222-1320 is the number. 508-222-1320. It, I'll give you the last word on this. On, uh, on the service dog thing? Yeah. On it's, fake it's, 
serve yeah, this dog. Well, as I said, the whole thing's gotten out of hand. As I said, we, we did grow up with seeing eye dogs, whether that's a correct term or not. Yep. But I don't remember any other types of service dogs. Matter of fact, there was a story the other day on the computer. Somebody was trying to bring, of all things, uh, one of those exotic peacocks or something yeah, along. Yeah, uh, Dexter and, the peacock. Yeah, and uh, they, they, they said, no, 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 that's enough. But, uh, yeah, that the peacock was needed for emotional support. God. No, I think this is going too far. Yeah. You can bring a stuffed animal or something, but not a, a real one. And there's, it was one of the articles I read, uh, this parents of an autistic child, who they're going to fly, yeah. and he's really, really wicked uh, scared of cats and dogs, primarily dogs. Yeah. So... There you have to make a decision. Who are you going to support more, the, the child or the one that needs the uh, animal? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, you have a real trade-off exactly there. And you're going right. to get a lawsuit either way, depending yeah. on how you go with that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, just to, you know, so, why, so, so people yeah. with their phony baloney emotional needs, yeah. and I know there are some people who really have emotional needs that a gerbil hamster can help with, yeah. but not as many people who are claiming it. So you're, you're giving in to people with these phony baloney needs, yeah. and then taking it out on someone like this autistic child who loves flying, by the way, it said in the article, Probably. but is deathly afraid of animals. animals now, again, yeah. and if someone has a trained service dog, that you can make accommodations. He yeah. can sit on this side, yeah. shield it from yeah. the kid. Yeah. If you don't have a trained service dog and just have one of those phony baloney vests on it. It jumps up all over the place. Okay. And then the, the living daylights out of the child at that point. And above and beyond that? What about the poor schmucks with allergies? Yeah, that's another part, too, that you have to consider. Yes, allergies to dogs and cats and all that. And with the fur flying, yeah, I have a nice panic attack at 37,000 feet. Boy, that's something that the captain wants, isn't it? Here's what I'd like to get, folks. I'd like to get an emotional support dolphin. <laughs> that way, United Airlines has to install a pool for my emotional there support dolphin go. on their planes when I have to fly <laughs> coast right. to coast. You're listening to Paul Healy. He's not an egomaniac.